What do we do on the next edition of Double Tap? Oh, I've got an idea. Hang on, let me call Steven. We're gonna FaceTime Steven Scott right now. I've got a really good idea for the next show. Let's see what he thinks. Uh, I'm Steven Scott, and uh, this is Double Tap TV. Uh, I'm with Mark. Mark, I've, 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 oh, I've, oh. who's calling me now? Hang on a second, hang on. Hello? Steven! I'm, I'm trying to record. Okay, no, 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 stop, stop what you're doing. I've got a brilliant idea for the next episode of Double Tap TV. <sighs> Another idea. Hey, listen, you know how we get a lot of emails and tweets and people say, how do you produce the show? What kind of equipment do you use? You're in Scotland, Mark's in Montreal. Why don't we show them how we produce an episode of Double Tap TV? Um, okay. When? Uh, we just started. What? Oh, come on, I haven't even done my hair. The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is, is one of our core values. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV, a very special one, if I do say so myself, because this week we're focusing on how we actually produce this show. If you guys have a question like you always do, the email address is feedback at ami.ca and follow us on Twitter. It is at Double Tap Canada and use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. I am Mark Aflalo and by my side each and every single week is Stephen Scott. Stephen, how do you feel about pulling back the curtain a bit this week and giving people a glimpse into what we do here on Double Tap TV? Well, firstly, Mark, leave my curtains alone. Uh, but yes, I love the idea. Although my question to you is this, how are we going to do this without it looking like we've got the easiest job ever? I, I, I get where you're going, but I think that we can probably take a risk this week. But, but you know, actually, Stephen, we do get a lot of questions. A lot of people email us at feedback at AMI.ca asking us, how do you produce the show? What kind of equipment do you use? How do you do it? You're in Glasgow, Scotland. Mark's in Montreal, Canada. So, you know, I hope you don't mind me bringing this up, but at the beginning of this endeavor, Double Tap TV, you were a little bit nervous about doing the whole TV thing, weren't you? Yeah, I still am, to be honest. I mean, I'm a radio guy, right? <laughs> so the idea of sitting in front of a camera and, and talking didn't seem natural as it did in front of a mic. I, I just feel weird not having a microphone right up against my face. Plus, I've got to get dressed and I've got to tidy my hair, believe it or not. Um, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's one of those things, I'm just not used to this, and um, I, I've tried to get used to it, um, and, and I think, I think I'm getting there, you tell me. Yeah, well, you know, you're definitely, you're definitely coming along, but you know, it is, it is a lot of work, it is a lot of work, we, we bring this product to you each and every single week, so for those that don't know, Stephen is actually in Glasgow, Scotland, which is several thousand miles away from me, in Montreal, Canada, and in order to set up the show, way back when, I flew all the way to Scotland to meet Stephen at his home. I had, a, what, 24 hours basically there. Uh, so we could get a studio set up in your spare room in order to make sure we were on the same page. I bought a lighting kit, camera equipment, cables, chargers, everything that we needed. And it was waiting at your house, piles of Amazon boxes. So when I got there, it was basically, okay, let's get to work and let's get this Glasgow version of this studio uh, up and running. Now, our gear of choice, Stephen, um, has always been Sony when it comes to cameras. Sony has been making the best cameras in the world, bar none, for a very long time. People consume their media on Sony TVs. People watch their media and he listen on Sony you know, home theater systems. Everything is shot on Sony Pro cameras when you look at the entire industry. So it made sense that if you wanted to go Pro, we wanted to go Sony. So that's what we did. On the audio side of things, people ask us, what kind of microphones do you use? We've got, of course, a big background in radio. So we had a lot of equipment already at hand. But when it came to the TV setup, I got some great Sennheiser lav microphones. So when we do stuff on the road, kind of, you know, back and forth and we're roaming around, that's a lavalier microphone those ones that clip on your lapel, as they call them, lapel pins sometimes, uh, lapel mics sometimes, and of course, shotgun microphones like the Sennheiser that you can't even see in the shot right now, but we'll give you a glimpse a little bit later. So everything does sound amazing. Now, Stephen, going back to that trip for a second, what was your fondest memory of that experience? Well, I'd love to say it's the Amazon boxes and the opening of it. It was like Christmas come early. But the memory that really is burned on my brain is you and I going to a photo shoot that day that you came to Scotland at a photographer's house in a very small town, only accessible by a very twisty, turny road that you had never driven on, never mind even on the right side of the road. No, no, I think you mean the, the wrong side of the road? Whatever, but it was terrifying, let me tell you. It was <laughs> terrifying. The fact we survived that trip told me we'd get along fine doing this show. 
not only was that the first time driving uh, in Scotland, it was the first time driving on the other side of the road. It was it was it was truly an experience. And you know what, Stephen, you were a great navigator, believe it or not. So you know there what? You go. Let's get into some of these questions from our audience and about how we actually do things on this show. Shall we do it? Let's do it. Stick around. After the break, we dive into the most common questions we get asked about making Double Tap TV. That is coming up right after a quick break. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit AMI.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Again, thank you so much for being involved, guys. Because we're talking all about your questions this week, I have to remind you, our email address is feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, it is at Double Tap Canada. And that hashtag is also important, ask Double Tap. So this week, it's all about how we produce Double Tap TV, how we make this show each and every single week. I am Mark Aflalo. Stephen Scott is always by my side even though he is thousands of miles away in Glasgow, Scotland. Stephen, this is a topic we've been asked to cover for a very long time. So what do you say we actually kick things off? And first up, we'll start with the most common question we get, which is, how do you record interviews? Oh, that's an excellent question. But look, what I'll do is I'll actually take you to my editing desk, which is right behind me. So let, I've got a camera just to my left here. I'm just going to grab this and take you to the desk. So... Just to show you my camera setup, which is always in front of me, of course, I've got my camera, I've got my field monitor, and I've got my Sennheiser microphone. Uh, there are spotlights all around me here so that you can see my beautiful face uh, as much as you can really put up with. Um, and just over here, I mean, this, this background that I have behind me at all times, people think is, is fake. It's not, it's very real. Uh, and I'm gonna show you today. So I'm just gonna plunk the camera here. Of course, due to social distancing, I can't, Get anyone in to help me here so i'm filming this as uh, as we go on my own so hopefully you can see me okay um so yeah what i want to talk about here is interviews and recording interviews and one of the questions i get asked a lot of the time is how do you record someone um make sure that you get good quality video but also get the full side of their conversation well i'm going to let you into a couple of Tips and tricks here, all right? I use Zoom. Now, Zoom is a fantastic program. And what it lets you do is it lets you do a couple of things that are really important. It lets you record individual people's audio, which is very important, of course, especially for the radio show, which, of course, I do from this desk as well. It lets me record the individual audio tracks of each participant in a call. But thanks to a pin feature on Zoom, when you go into a call with someone, you can pin their video. And when you hit record, it will only record their video. So you take their video, you take their audio track, and you put them together in the audio editor and indeed in the video editor. And Mark will talk a bit about that later. So I'm going to go into my preferences. Settings, system dialog. And I'm going to go uh, to the bit where I've got the option for recording options. Settings. You are couple of set table, audio in table, share screen, chat, background and filters, profile, statistics. Recording. There we are. So I'm now going to go through the options on this list. Verticals, scroll area, close, settings, table, verticals, deliver, scroll area, close, settings, table, recording, verticals, deliver, scroll area, close, settings, table, recording, sub slash user slash Stephen Scott slab. Okay, sorry. Table. I'll take it from here. So I'm now going to go into the recording settings. Slash user slash Stephen Scott slab open. 100.7 gigabytes. Choose a location to save the recording to after the meeting ends. Untaped. So that's asking me, uh, do I want to choose a place where the recordings go after uh, the recording is finished? Well, I can choose that option, or I can just pick a place on the system. I think I've just chosen my downloads folder on my computer, so I'm happy with that. Record a separate audio file for each participant. Tip. Record a separate audio file for each participant. That's really important because that's exactly what I'm talking about. It means every single person, whether it be me, whether it be Mark, or indeed the third person in the call, it makes sure that their audio is recorded on a separate audio track. That means that, let's say, for example, someone coughs during your question or you cough during their answer. You can actually just snip that out in the audio edit because you've got everybody on a separate track. So once those two options are enabled, that's pretty much it. You're good to go. So I think what we need to do is start a meeting and show you how I would record it. Um, let me get Mark on the phone here. Hang on. I've got my phone here. Um, it's, it's ringing, which is good. Uh, Mark, Mark, could you jump on Zoom for a second for me? Thanks. Oh, there he is. Hi, Mark. Hi, guys. How are you? 
I, I'm kind of using them at the moment. Sorry, Mark. Um, but I just want to show you this. Mm -hmm. Now, you will notice on screen at the moment that Mark is on the left-hand side of the screen and I'm on the right-hand side of the screen. I'm actually, weirdly, I've got my back to the camera because that's actually my main camera that this is filming from. I don't have a camera in front of me here, except the one I'm looking at, obviously, to talk to you right now. Um, in order to do this, in order to do the pin video thing, what you do is you hover your mouse over the uh, person that you want to uh, focus on. And in my case, I'm just going to zoom in here. There's a mute button and then there's an ellipsis next to that. And if I drop that down, you'll see the word pin. Now, when I click on that, Mark then becomes full screen on my display. That is awful, isn't it? Uh, but that means now I can go to record and I can hit record, which is down here. I'm going to click on that and I can see, and I can choose either record on the computer or record on the cloud. To be honest, I'd recommend you record to your computer if you've got the hard drive space because the cloud version isn't quite as good and also will not do the whole thing you want, which is to record only Mark's side of the conversation. When I hit that, Mark will get a notification on his screen that says the meeting's being recorded. We have the conversation and then I can hit stop. And that's it, really. I mean, that's it. We've done our interview. We've had a great time. Have you enjoyed yourself, Mark? Had a wonderful time, guys. He's such a good liar, isn't he? Um, well, there you go. That is essentially it. I'm going to stop the recording and we've done our interview. You know, talking there about Zoom, it's a really good program and it's a great way for us to get guests onto the show easily, isn't it? Yeah, and all these features are also available on the free tier of Zoom, but if you want more than 40 minutes per call, Stephen, you need to actually pay. You mentioned editing. Now, I dabble in editing from time to time, but you do this, obviously, far more professionally than me. What do you, what do you use over there? That is my trade secret, Stephen. Okay, fine. But lots of people ask about it, so let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to dive into the editing process and some tips and tricks from Stephen Scott. It is Double Tap TV. We'll be back in just a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit AMI.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV, taking a peek behind the curtain of just how we produce this program. If you've got a question for us burning in your mind, give us a shout on Twitter. It is at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag Ask Double Tap or an email. It's perfectly fine as well. Feedback at AMI.ca. Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott with you each and every single week. Stephen, similar to you, I get a lot of people asking me if this set behind me is actually some random photo. But in fact, <gasps> Alexa, turn on my office lights. Ta-da! It is not. This is actually the studio in which I record Double Tap TV each and every single week. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a little handheld camera over here. Hi guys! On the handheld camera, I can give you a better look of this actual studio space because it's not really that big. Due to COVID, I had to move everything home out of a nice little studio that I had, and I built something in my basement, which is really neat. When I turn this camera around, you're going to see what I see when I record Double Tap TV, which is a monitor so I can see how I'm framed. You're going to see the camera, which is behind this glass gizmo, which is actually a teleprompter pad. What it allows me to do is put an iPad down on this platform in front of the camera, and it reflects the screen in reverse onto a glass panel that's right in front of the camera. This way, when I'm looking at the lens, I can also see text and notes if I need to see that when I'm recording the show. When I look up just a little bit, you can see I've got some lighting all attached to the ceiling. When I planned out this room, I put plugs on the ceiling along with some acoustic audio pads. You can see I have that Sennheiser microphone that we keep talking about right over my head, again with wires hanging on top instead of on the ground in the way. I've got a little mini camera that I can use for overhead shots. That's great for doing product photography. When I pan over to the left here, you can see some guitars on the wall. You can see this whole wall behind me which actually is in front of me when I'm looking at it, is made out of a hardwood flooring. I did that so I can use it as a background for different things as well, including this show. Wow. Well, yeah, I think we're going to get a lot of questions this week, to be honest about this, and, and probably a lot of things that we're not covering. But one thing we must talk about is editing, because, you know, putting this show together is a lot more than just recording our interviews and, you know, sitting in front of the camera and talking, isn't it? You got that right, Stephen, and I've taken the opportunity now to shift gears and move to my desk so I can give you a glimpse of what it's like to edit one of these editions of Double Tap TV. 
So guys, on the screen right now, you can see exactly what's on my desktop. I've got an edition of Adobe Premiere Pro open. Now, Adobe Premiere Pro is one of the top end audio or video editing suites when it comes to commercial video production, whether it be television or broadcast or even feature film. There's other companies like Avid who make some great programs like Media Composer. DaVinci Resolve is a, is a complete editing suite, but also used in color grading throughout the entire industry. And there's some other companies as well. Apple, of course, has Final Cut Pro, which is very cool. But we need to explain a bit what this post-production process is. Post-production is anything that is done to the video after it's been shot. So we've gone ahead and shot all our video for this episode, and now we need to put it all together. So how do you do that? Well, when you look at my screen over here, you can see that on the left side, and actually the entire screen is, is divided into a whole bunch of different panels. On the bottom left, you've got what's called my project window, which has all the media that's involved in here. So I've dragged and dropped media from the actual cameras. So I've taken out the memory card and I've dragged and dropped the video files into Premiere Pro. And Steven has sent me all his video via Dropbox. So I was able to drag that stuff in here as well. A lot of people organize their footage in various shapes and forms. You can see here that I have a folder for Mark A6500. That means this is all Mark video from the camera, which I was using, which was the Sony A6500. So I organize my footage a little bit like this. It does tend to get messy sometimes if you're dragging things in from different places, but as long as you have a system in place, it makes it a little bit easier to put things together. So on screen now, you can see there's some footage of Steven. So I'm gonna actually start from scratch here. And the way you start from scratch is you take an initial video file and I'm gonna right click on that video file and I'm gonna create a new sequence from that clip. That creates a brand new scene. Imagine the whole show is a scene. It brings that video onto that scene as its own layer. When it comes to video production, things are done in layers. Imagine that you're looking at a window and on this window is a great advertisement for something and a picture and all these different things that look almost three-dimensional. Well, those are different. Imagine them being layers of glass in front of each other. Obviously, the closest layer to you is going to be the most visible, with the one furthest away being less visible and also appear to be behind things. That same logic falls into place when it comes to audio and video editing. So when you're looking at a timeline or a sequence in this case, you can see that there are various video tracks. The lowest one is the one that represents the track that's furthest away from you. And as you go higher and higher, you're putting things on top of that image. So here we've got the image of me. What I normally do when I drop something in here is I look at it and say, okay, am I happy with the way it looks? In this particular case, I wanna zoom in a bit and cut off some of the extraneous information that's on there. So I wanna get rid of some of the things that are in the background. So what I do is I zoom in to the actual image and you can see when I zoom in, it cuts off things in the background and things around the edges that I don't want to be seen. And then I'll slide my picture over a bit to the down and a bit to the left so that it's framed nicely in the image. Once I'm happy with mine, I can go ahead and grab Steven's footage from here as well and take his and drag it on top of mine so it's a layer above it. I could do the same thing to Steven's image. I can zoom it in a bit. I can position it left and right. And now I have a great image of Steven. But this is where we get a little bit more creative because we want to do things like have both of us on the screen at the same time. This is where graphics come into play. Graphics come into play in various aspects. The first thing I'm going to do, because I know that I mentioned the email address and the Twitter handle, I want to put that logo on the bottom of the screen that says our email address and our Twitter handle when it happens. The other example are things like our intro to the show. That's all pre-produced and packaged and ready for me to drop in. So once I cut everything together and I put all the graphics the way I wanted and I cut the segments together and I put all the lower thirds together, we have what you call a double tap TV show. Obviously this takes several hours of editing and fine tuning and tweaking. And then of course we master the color so that everything looks nice and balanced for you guys. And of course the sound. We obviously focus very, very hard on sound because of our radio background. So we always use the best quality microphones, whether it's a lavalier mic or whether it's an overhead boom mic. And then in post-production, I go through all the audio to make sure that nothing is louder than the other. Everything is balanced and equal and everything is limited so that it doesn't go too loud and become crunchy or hard on hearing. We also use a method of description called integrated described video, which means that we don't have somebody, a third voice, describing what's going on. We're doing that for you while we actually talk to you here on camera. And while we actually do things on camera, we explain in great detail what we're doing, which is the difference from described video versus integrated described video. 
So, Stephen, that's a pretty slimmed down version of how we edit the show together. I know you have some tips and tricks that you want to dive into as well so we uh, can wrap up the show with. I'd say that. Obviously, a lot of time goes into it because we want to make it just right for you guys at home. You know, Mark, over the years, I've taught myself some cool tricks to make the best audio and video content to some degree using very simple tech that most of us probably have around us. And I wanted to share some of those tips with you. Now, starting with audio. If you've decided to start a podcast, you'll obviously need something to record on. Now, these days, most devices have decent microphones in them. I tell people this all the time, Mark. Smartphones are a great place to start with. There's free apps like Voice Memos on the iPhone, Voice Recorder on Android, or third-party apps like Just Press Record available on both iPhone and Android. If you don't have a smartphone, but you've got a dictaphone or one of those specialist audio recorders like the Plex Talk or Victor Reader, you can use that too. Use headphones where possible when recording, though, so you can be sure that you're getting good audio levels. You've got to make sure you can hear yourself clearly. Uh, and then if you're using a smartphone, remember to turn on the Do Not Disturb mode. You don't want that great idea, rant or interview being lost because your mum called you. Also, the microphone itself can actually uh, be worth considering. If you're taking part in an interview over Zoom or another platform, you might want to think about putting headphones in that have a built-in mic. It cuts down on the feedback sound coming from the phone and it focuses the mic on what you're actually saying. Now, I mean, it sounds crazy, but the earbuds that come bundled with your smartphone or really any pair of headphones with mics built in these days are great. Many people use AirPods, for example. Now, as for recording video, there are a couple of top tips I want to share here. Firstly, film yourself and your subject in landscape mode. Unless you're only posting to Instagram, it's best to give as much of the potential image as possible. If you're a voiceover user on the iPhone, make the most of shooting video and taking pictures with the built-in guidance on the camera app, helping you locate the subject, set up your frame, and let you know that the image is centred. And a quick tip for those of you who are coming on to our show or any other via Zoom or another conference platform, if you're using a laptop, raise it up on a pile of books or a box so the camera is in line with your face. Nobody wants to look up your nostrils, I guarantee it. And finally, quite literally, my coolest tip of all, buy yourself a neck fan. Yes, I'm being serious. Every time I record this show with Mark, I'm running around at last minute, sorting out script, making sure my background is clear of all the debris. Hopefully it is today. And when I finally sit down, I'm starting to perspire. Well, this is a cool neck fan uh, with a fan on each arm that points up to my face and gives me a relaxing breeze. Let me just put it on here. Um, so it means that I can, you know, basically chill out, quite literally. Uh, my wife actually got this as a joke for Christmas time but it's actually been amazing. Um, it has LEDs that turn on to, I mean, Mark will tell me what colors they are, but I think that's probably a kind of yellowy color, maybe a pink color. I've got no idea, I'm colorblind, I couldn't care less. But what I'm interested in is the fan bit. And uh, I don't know if you'll hear it on mic, but it gets actually pretty loud. Um, and you can get some nice breeze. And Mark, I can feel nice and cool. <sighs> I'm chilled. Cool indeed, Stephen. <laughs> Guys at home, I hope this gives you a little insight into how we produce this show on a weekly basis. Hope it answers all your questions. If not, you know our email address. It's feedback at ami.ca. And of course, on Twitter, follow us. It is at Double Tap Canada. And use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap, whenever you've got a question for us. On behalf of Stephen Scott, I am Marco Flalo. Thank you guys for being here. We'll catch you on our next episode. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Latar. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Aflalo. Social media, Andy Wynn. Segment producer, Sean Priest. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, production, Kara Nye. Director, programming, Brian Perdue. VP, content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.